Today, you are going to experience something I don't think you've ever experienced before as a painter. Mary Garish, what are you going to do today? Oh, goodness. We're going to have some fun today. We're going to explore color. And we're going to simplify it, and we're going to have a great time with exploring color with different paint combinations. So can you explain to me what you've got there? You have four paintings. It looks like four paintings on your palette. What's the story? Okay, this is one image that I took myself, and it's a photograph that I really like. There are things about it that I would design differently, but all I did was print it out. This is just printer paper. Okay. And so what we're going to do, we're going to study color. Uh, I want to make a studio painting out of this, but I'm not sure where I want to go with the color. Do I want it more tonal? Do I want it a really colorful sunset? You know, I just don't know. So instead of exploring that on my canvas, I'm going to do a lot of prep work. So prior to going to the canvas, I have lots of answers already made. And this is one of the first things I'm going to do, decide tonal, not tonal. Is it going to be more in the yellow sphere, like the golden hour? Or am I going to go more towards reds and oranges? So each of these is going to be a different palette. And I'm going to limit the colors. Um, and there are lots of different reasons why you might want to limit your palette. You know, if you have 20 different colors squirted out on your palette, it's going to be much, much harder to have color harmony. And what I mean by that is having all your colors be cohesive. So if you only have one yellow, one red, one blue, which those are the three primaries, it's virtually impossible not to have color harmony. So each time I go into this with different color combinations, I'm going to have one of the three primaries. But I'm going to change things up and they're all going to be different. Now, if while I'm doing that, I decide, you know what? I need a different yellow. I can squirt out a different yellow. Uh, and I will end up doing that on the one where I'm trying to get more of the golden hour. If I decide I want to squirt out another color, I can do that because I'm experimenting. And when you experiment, you end up discovering all kinds of different things that you never would if you just kept with the same palette. So through discovery, you know, we surprise ourselves and hopefully we surprise our audience also, hopefully in a good way. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. I'll tell you what, why don't we uh, go ahead and get the show officially started and we'll come right back to you. All right. It's Art School Live with Eric Rose. Now, here's your host, Eric Rose. Hey guys, I'm Eric and I am here to help you learn to paint. Anyone, I believe, anyone can learn to paint. And a lot of people don't have the confidence to do it, but I'm here to tell you, you can do it. And that's what the show is all about. I have different painting lessons every day. And today is no exception. We have viewers. Uh, we've had millions of views from over 50 countries. Welcome, everybody. Make sure you go into the comments and tell us where you're watching from. Our guest today is Mary Garish, who is a world-class master artist, absolutely a brilliant, uh, often known as a tonalist because she does a lot of tonal works, but not everything she does is completely tonal. As you can tell, she is masterful and she's going to teach you today some way to try some new color combinations and do some experimentation. So make sure you hang around. It's going to be great. Speaking of hanging around, you can win a prize today. You can win the easel brush clip. Uh, no more falling brushes. Uh, 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 uh. All you got to do is leave a comment in the comment section. Tell us where you're watching from, and we will grab somebody either in live or replay for the winner of the prize, which we'll announce next time. The winner of the last prize, my book, Make More Money Selling Your Art, is Kathy Audis in Iowa. Kathy, congrats to you. We also have a free gift for you today, and it is 201 Essential plein air tips. This is brand new. If you don't have this, it's really, really good. Just go to outdoorpainter.com slash ebook. All right. And please 
give us a subscribe on YouTube. Just go to YouTube and look up Art School Live. Also, give me a follow whenever you possibly can, wherever you possibly can. I'm everywhere. Okay, now back to Mary Garish. Okay, Mary, take it away. All right. So, like I said, we're going to experiment. And this is just printer paper, so it's really, really cheap. And that's how I like to study. I like to keep it on the, the cheap. So the first limited palette that we're going to use is Cad Yellow Light, Permanent Bright Red, which is really Cad Red Light in a lot of different um, uh, colors, Excuse like Rumbacher, it would be Cad yeah. Red Light. And then ultramarine, which is, you know, all these colors vary from different distributors. But, you know, pretty much that's a pretty simple palette. Now, so why don't you do this? Why don't you, just for, for grins, why don't you do a brush stroke of each of the three colors underneath, underneath where it says that? That way we can keep track of it. All right, good. Cad yellow light. Permanent bright red. And then ultramarine blue. All right, good. And so after I do paint this, I'm actually going to put, you know, all the little different color swatches that I've used to paint this sky. So if I decide that this is the color scheme I want to use for my studio painting, I've got a nice little array of all my different color swatches that I can go back and match when I make the studio painting. Oh, so it's like a color mixing map. Yes, absolutely. Oh, well, um, we should call this show How to Create a Color Mixing Map. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to get started. I'm going to start with my darks. And like I said, you see how dark uh, ultramarine is. And here is, I'm not using cobalt on this one, but there is cobalt. And you can see how much lighter cobalt is. So usually... For my blue, I use cobalt instead of ultramarine, and that's because I know I have a tendency to paint too dark. But I'm going to really restrain myself from the darks and hopefully not make this too dark. Now, another thing I want to talk about is this photograph. Um, you see the darks are very dark. If I was out in plain air painting this, I'd see a lot more color in these darks. So that's a reason why you go out and paint from life. Or... If you're going to go out and photograph, look at your photograph and then take notes. Look at what you can actually see and take notes as to, you know, you can see the greens in here. What are the greens? Are they yellow greens, brown greens, blue greens? So that if you're going to paint from photographs, you at least know in your mind what was there. There's a question from Larry Tiller Howell asking, what does tonalism mean? Well, you know, being all visual artist, it's always easier to explain it with a photograph, which I don't have. But there's a whole book that you can look up on tonalism. And what it means is usually restricted color and very close in value paintings. So within uh, a tonal range. Right. And, you know, typically the tonalists, which were about 1880 to 1920, they usually used a very limited palette, a variety of limited palettes, but very limited palette. And uh, it's, it's really, I think, much more difficult to paint tonally than it is to use a wide range of values. I agree. It's very hard. Very, very hard. Okay, so I'm going to get started here. And with this palette, I'm going to put in my darks, but try not to get too dark with my ultramarine and so here's my and I do these really quickly so this is not about designing shape all I'm doing here is thinking about color combinations I'm not thinking about design that will come later so that's my gonna be my darkest dark and now I'm going to come in with a well I think that's a little too you like. So I'm going to tone that down a little bit because this is kind of a lower light situation. And I think that's got a little bit too much. Okay. I think that's going to work better for a tone. So that really gives people an understanding of how there can be 
detail in a shadow and a camera won't show that. Exactly. So you have to know if you're going to paint from photographs, you have to know what is missing in that photograph. And you do that through observation in life. So you're out there taking your photograph. So take advantage of that time to note what the photograph does and doesn't tell you. Okay, so you can see how rapidly I'm doing this. I'm not taking great care to study shapes. When I, after I get my color combos done, then I'll go back in. I think this photo, just as it is, has great shapes in it, and which is one of the reasons I was drawn to it. Okay, so you see, I'm not worried about edges either or texture. I'm just talking about color now. Right. So now I'm going to go to that background a little bit and I'm going to put in this distant shore. So it's going to be not as warm, not as dark and a little bit cooler back there. Again, yeah. this is a, gr a case where the camera lies. Right, exactly. And we just have to know how. Now, maybe if I was a better photographer, it wouldn't lie quite as much, but I am no. not. no. Okay, so now I'm gonna go for my sky. And all the colors in the sky will be a lighter tone than the landscape. This landscape, these are all uprights. So those are usually the darkest thing in the landscape. And your sky, this is a very, it's a sunset as you can see. And these clouds are kind of broken up. So even though I'm not studying form right now, I am gonna kind of make a pattern out of these clouds. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in the shadow side of the cloud. And I think that's a little bit dark, even for the shadow side. So I'm gonna go ahead and lighten it up a bit. And see, I'm unifying some of these patterns. What does and that I, mean when you say you're unifying? Okay, so you see all these wispy clouds that you have in here? I'm going to make it one bigger form instead of all those little clouds. So as I'm going, I'm making those decisions that are design decisions. Okay, yeah, see, I like that a little bit better. I'm going to leave a little bit of this darker tone down here at the bottom because clouds at the bottom usually are they're heavier so they're a little bit darker but this passage i'm going to lighten it up okay and like i said i'm not really worried about the shapes of the clouds either but you're painting in oils is that correct yes it is oils so now over here I've added to that color. I'm cooling it off a little bit. I hope that you can tell that this is a little bluer than that. And why? That, why would you do that? Okay, so our light source is here. So this is going to be warmer than it will over here. And this has more red in it than this. So this color, it is the same value, which means it's just as dark as this, but it has more blue in it. So that will tell us in the painting, help to tell us where our light source is coming from. Okay, there's a question from Art San Francisco who says, why didn't she go plein air outside but paint instead of photo painting on photographs? Well, I certainly could, but and I do paint in plein air often. Now this I'd be painting from a boat, which actually is kind of fun, but you know, sometimes weather and everything, I just happened to capture this um, like at sunset and I loved it. But I do go out and paint in plain air all the time. But for those of you who can't or won't, or, you know, you find this and you love it, you need to know basically what the photograph does and doesn't have. And so typically so, you would oftentimes for a studio painting, you would use a plein air painting as a study, as a reference. Absolutely. Uh, that is much, much better than just using the photograph. 
uh, oftentimes I'll use the plein air study and the photograph, you know, which augment each, each other also. Right. But in this case, I did not do a plein air study today. Okay. Um, so, but it is an area that I have painted a lot, luckily. Okay, so now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move on to the lighter tone that is right underneath this cloud. And I'm just gonna make a pattern here. And so I wanted to bring, instead of yellows, more oranges into this part of the painting. Why? Um, because I'm ex the next one is gonna be more about yellow. And so this one, you know, sunset is typically yellows and oranges and pinks. So I'm trying to decide which way I want to go in my studio painting. So this one is more about reds and oranges. So that's what we're going to do here. Okay. And I am using medium in this. The, um, you'd be surprised how easy it is to paint on this paper, but it is still paper. And so you need to move the paint around a little bit more. Okay. So now... I'm gonna put in another cloud pattern here. Now, as the, this is closer to the horizon. So as you get closer to the horizon, the clouds are usually smaller because in the distance, your linear perspective, things get smaller in the distance, just like the trees very far away, the trees get smaller. Well, the clouds do the same thing. So that's why this cloud is bigger. That's actually overhead and closer to you. And this cloud is farther away. Okay, so now, you see, I'm not really worried about edges and things. If I was gonna be worried about that, this would take a lot, lot more time. Right. And I'm just trying to be quick and do this little color study. All I'm worried about is color. So let me put a little bit of this over in here. Okay, and that kind of grayed out because it went into the blue. So I'm gonna add a little bit more color over in here. Because I like it. Okay, so now as we get closer to the horizon, you know, I can make whatever color combinations I want here, but I am gonna get it nice and warm and red close to the horizon line. So I've mixed up a little bit redder, peachier color here. You can see how hot that is. Yeah, I like it. Yeah, and it really does, you know, right there, right before the sun goes down, it does get really, really red a lot of times. Just these beautiful color combinations. So you can see most of this is tonal, but right down here, at the horizon, I'm gonna make it garish. So this is a warmer tone to those redder tones, but it's the same value. Okay, so luckily I don't think I'm getting too dark on this. Okay, so now we've got the yellow. Right around the sun there. We're going to put some nice little patterns in here. Okay. And there we go. So now we're going to kind of bring it down into the water here, get some color in the water. If you just joined, Mary is painting actually over a photograph just to test color variations. It's going to be like creating a um, color map for a studio painting, deciding which colors to use. And this is just on printer paper. So, you know, it's, it's very inexpensive and it's a great way. It's really, 
I really encourage you to do this because it's just so much fun. Yep. Welcome Poland, India, uh, England, Canada. Okay, so just to reiterate, I'm only using three colors here. Cadmium yellow light, permanent bright red, which is cadmium red light, and ultramarine. So a very, very simplified pattern. Okay, so we're going to put this reflection in here. Typically, is a reflection darker or lighter than what, uh, what you see? So the reflection, the darks reflect lighter and the lights reflect darker. All right. So that's typically, and warms reflect cooler and cools reflect lighter. So it's kind of opposites there. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with this color combination. And you see, you know, I'm not taking it to any finished state. This is all about experimenting. And I might put a little bit, might heat this up a little bit in this cloud just to kind of bring that nice orange tone into the purples here. Because that's what we see right about this time of the day. Okay. All right, so that's the first palette that we're doing. Like I said, Cad Yellow Light, Permanent Bright Red, and Ultramarine. Okay, so now we're going to move to a more tonal palette that was the Zorn palette. So it is Yellow Ochre, Venetian Red, and Black. Now, I don't really... I, I actually, to admit, I have not painted with black much, but I thought I need to experiment with it to see, I mean, if it was good enough for Zorn, it should certainly be good enough for me. But well, I think I told you when we were together that I went to the Zorn Museum and they told yeah. me that he didn't really use that very much. He did it early in his career to create, get people talking. Yes. So I see, okay, so now I'm putting in the darkest dark using that color combination. And um, now some people swear by black, yeah. but we'll see. We'll see Which, what we like here, what we what get What kind of black of. are you using? I'm using ivory black because it's a very versatile black. It can go warm or cool. And um, so I'm putting in my darkest dark here. And as we said, I'm doing this very quickly. So it's kind of like speed painting because I'm just having fun. And these are a lot of fun to do. I actually really like that mauve purple in there. So now I'm gonna put in a little bit of a lighter tone, a little bit warmer, which will be from the light source that we have, which is right here, that setting sun. So we will get some of these warmer tones. Okay. And I actually kind of like that mauve tone in with the, the warmer brown. Okay, so now we're going to get to the sky. Okay, here's a question from yes. SRP. Pardon my lack of knowledge. How do you choose which red to choose? You choose permanent bright red. Why not cad red, alizarin crimson, or quinacridone red? The same with other yellows and blues. You can choose all of those. That's the whole thing about experimenting. So on the next one I'm doing, I'm going to use a really weird palette. I'm going to use for my red, it's going to be rose violet. So all of those are good choices. You just have to decide what you want to do with your painting. What color scheme you want. Do you want it tonal? Do you want it very bright and colorful? But this is all about using different reds, different yellows, different blues. So on this, I don't even have a blue. I just got my black that is acting as a blue. And I've actually even done like studies with just two colors, like um, which was very tonal, uh, Venetian and cobalt. And it's amazing how much color you can get with just those two colors. 
Okay, so as before, I'm going to try to make it a little bit cooler with my black over further away from the light source. So I don't know, I've added the black. It's okay, but it's not really feeling that cool to me like I would get with a blue, but there we have it. And the other thing that I can do here is if you keep your values very close, like how close these are, you can really get a lot of temperature variations in this one value. So you see, getting closer to the bottom here, this is a little warmer. It's very subtle, but it's a little warmer. It's got a little bit more of the red in it, the Venetian red. Now, I don't know if you've never used Venetian red, which it's, it's a very, very gray red. And so it's really nice for tonal paintings. And it really helps, uh, you know, typically, typically, if you want to uh, make a color less saturated, you add the complement to it. So if you have a blue, you'd add a red, or, you know, just part of the three primaries. So almost all of these colors that I'm using today, they have a little bit of the red, a little bit of the, or a uh, little bit of the red, a little bit of the yellow, and the blue in it. So they've got all three primaries just in different combinations. So this purple had the Venetian, the black, and a little bit of yellow ochre. This orange had the Venetian, the yellow ochre, and just a little bit of the black. So that's another way that you can get your paintings to have a more tonal quality. If I added just the red, and the uh, ochre together, then it wouldn't be, it would be a lot more, here, I'll do that. See, that's a lot harsher. Now that might be a color combination that we might use a little bit more down in the horizon. But up here, I wanted it further away. It's not as hot as it is down here by our light source. So, okay, so see, that's a lot more saturated down there. And that's where I'm going to put that really, really hot color. We have a great book uh, that John Potoshnik did where he did four color paintings using about 30 different, 30 or 40 different four color combinations. That I and, have that and, and it is wonderful. Yeah, it really is a good way to, to realize how, how you can push the, your limits with just four colors. Yes, and you learn so much about color mixing. So if any of you out there are beginner painters, I highly recommend his book and just, you know, playing with the limited palette. Okay, so here we go. We're trying to get some. And I don't know how long this has taken, but probably less than 10 minutes. So think about how much study you can get in when you're just keeping it simple. And I think since I have started studying more and painting less, that I have learned so, so much. And I think I'm having more success with my paintings. Okay, so I decided, I made an executive decision that I was gonna add in one more color. And I added in Indian yellow, which is a very concentrated pigment. It is very strong. So a tube of that will last you a very, very long time. And I wanna make this more about, a little bit more about the golden hour. So that's why I decided to add in my Indian yellow. So just because you decide that you're gonna start off using you know, one red, one yellow, one blue, it doesn't mean that you can't add in another color combination. This is your study, your painting. You can do whatever you want. So I love this. Who's going to try this at home? Put it in the comments. 
Okay. And it's, it really is. It's so much fun to play, you know, and you have a lot of success because there's, you know, you're not making a painting. You don't feel like you've, you've got all that pressure on you to make a painting. Okay. So see, we're getting some of that warmth vibrating around there. Kind of get some sweeping motions. And this is all about color, not really design or shapes, but I just wanted to get that in there. Okay, so now we'll carry those down into the water. And, you know, like I said, not taking a lot of care with shapes, just kind of getting big color notes in there. And as we said before, those darks in the photograph are not really that dark in real life. So that's why you could see that the tone I was putting on was lighter than what the photograph was showing. Nice. All right. You're going to do another one soon? Yep. Yep. Okay. So what we'll do, Mary, I'm going to take a quick break. Okay. And then, uh, and then we'll come back to it. I want to mention that uh, Mary is going to be on Plen Air Live, and she's also going to be at the Plen Air Convention this year. So what a great opportunity to see her twice, twice. And I'm lucky because she's my neighbor. I get to paint with her. <laughs> All right. So our guest today is Mary Garish, and uh, we are on Art School Live weekdays, 12 noon. In case you're here and you're new, we're trying to teach people to paint. We have a different lesson with a different artist every single day. We, of course, also produce in-depth painting videos on our company called PaintTube, where we have a really, really high quality, you know, HD quality. And we have a brand new video, actually, from Mary Garish. And I'm not finding it here, but oh, there it is. It's called Totalism and uh, Totalism with Mary Garish, where she goes through her entire process. And that's a brand new video. And you can find that at painttube.tv. Now, Mary is going to be also on Plen Air Live, which starts a week from tomorrow. It has made the difference in my world. I get invigorated. Today was just fantastic. I love it. It's just brilliant. I mark it off on my calendar. It was amazing. I need the community. I always wanted to go to art school. I feel like this could be it. The amount of value that is delivered is incomparable. When I did your first plein air live, I was only breaking into plein air, and that just opened up my world. Every day I say, this is the best day, and again, it's another best day. <laughs> I'm taking notes, I'm watching what people are doing. I really am very grateful for the opportunity to just look over the shoulders of these great artists. It has taught me not only better plein air, it has made me a better studio painter as well. You know, the lineup is just so amazing. Thank you for introducing all these wonderful new artists to me. Everyone you have on here is fabulous. You learn something from every single teacher every single time, and it's just brilliant. It has made the last three years really bearable. Somebody like me really can't get to a convention. You know, this is really special. I need people to paint with, even though we're not all physically together. But then the relationships that are formed, I think that's what's really long lasting. It's just really fun to, to see people that you've, you've become friends with, you know, throughout the years. There's always something to learn, no matter how many years you've been painting or if, if you're a very beginner. 
it has exceeded my expectations and I've already signed up for next year. This is my second year and I definitely signed up for next year. This is my fifth live event. I am so happy. I went for it. You know, this is really special. So make out, uh, make a make. I can't talk. Make a point to check out Plein Air Live uh, a week from tomorrow is our Essential Techniques Day, which is something you can get just by itself, or you can get that plus the other three days, and it will change the game. It's a lot of fun. We love doing it. Okay, uh, just a couple other things real quickly. We have a free e-gift for you: uh, outdoorpainter.com/ebook. Two hundred and essential. Plein air painting ticks, <laughs> tips. What, what's with my talking today? 201 essential plein air tips, outdoorpainter.com slash ebook. Make sure to get that and make sure to subscribe to this program. Even though I can't talk, uh, follow me on YouTube if you don't mind. Just hit that subscribe button and that little bell. That way you get the notifications when we go live. And we try to go live every weekday at 12 Noon. Okay, back to Mary Garish, and we're learning about how to create new color combinations. And this is fun. She's painting on the photographs to try and get a sense of what tones she's going to put down on a studio painting. Mary, take it away. Okay, so now we're in for some fun. So I bought this random color called emerald green just because it was pretty. <laughs> And I bought it thinking, oh, I'll use it for some water, maybe if I go out to California or wherever. And I just kind of never got around to using it. So I thought, you know what? Let's use it as part of our limited palette. So this limited palette is going to be cadmium lemon, our emerald green, our red will be rose violet, mm. and our blue will be cobalt. So, so it doesn't um, have to be a three color limited palette. It can be four colors. Right, right. I mean, you know, limited, you know, you can have two yellows, two reds and two blues, and that's still a limited palette. Yeah. But the more limited you are, like if you're going to travel, um, if you have a limited palette, how easy is that if you only have one red, one yellow and one blue? Yeah. So now I'm going to go into our dark first. And oh boy, that's really dark. So I'm going to add a little bit of white to that tone, see what we get. Okay, so there's a purple. I think maybe that's just a little bit too light. So I'm going to add my three primaries to that. Uh, more on the red and the blue. And get some of our darks in there. See what color combinations we end up with here. And then I'll, I have a greener tone here. So you just printed these out in color, right? Not, not grayscale well, or black and white. Right. It does kind of look like grayscale except for the sunset there. But yeah, and that's just how the photograph turned out because it was such a low light situation. And this is just so, copy paper you're printing on. Right, right. It's a, I have a laser jet printer, a uh, HP printer, and it's just from, from that. So I'm actually kind of really liking this color combination here. And you can see there's not a lot of value shift in the light because it's a very low light situation. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of color in these little trees here. And I love these little wispy trees. I love the way they're designed and everything. And, but I will, what I will probably do, I think, when I start working on design a little bit more, I think I'm gonna move these over to the right a little bit so there's a lot of tension because everything's kind of heavy over here now. And then take the sunset and put it maybe a little bit more to the left. But uh, I will study that and see how I like it. I'll probably study it just with the 
grayscale markers and decide what I like. There's all different ways to study. And what we're doing here now is studying color. So now I'm gonna go into the sky. And like I said before, all of my sky tones will be of a, that's pretty dark. That's a pretty so, color though. Oh, it is a pretty color. Oh, that's too light. So maybe somewhere in the middle. There we go. Yeah, I really like that color. Okay, so all of these colors so far, I have not, in my mixing, they've been a combination of yellow, red, and blue. And I have not dipped into my uh, emerald green yet, but I'm going to soon. I'm getting very excited about bringing that luscious color in. So in this painting, I mean, it will probably end up being a little bit tonal, but not as tonal as the other ones that I've done. So this one, I'm trying to get a little bit more saturated color. Okay. So I'm actually going to, since this part is closer to the light source, I'm gonna put a little bit more red in here. So yeah, this is gonna be, a, this is not gonna be as tonal as the other ones. This is gonna be a lot more color. But what a difference it makes just putting that red in there. It really feels like it's reflecting that light. Doesn't it? And this is a, it's not a color I use a lot and that's why I picked it, this ruby violet, but I might have to use it a little bit more, especially yeah. in the sunsets. Really, really pretty color. I like okay. it. Now we're gonna go a little wild and I'm dipping into my emerald green, but I'm toning it down with my red because as you know, green and red are complements. And I don't know, I'm really liking this crazy color combination. I'm not sure it really feels like a Florida sky, but you know, surprise your viewer and you know, so I'm making a painting. I'm just not copying tone for tone. So I got that emerald green in it? Yeah. Oh, I like and, it. But it's, it's toned down with a little bit of the ruby violet. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now let's get a little bit more of... Yeah, this might end up being too garish even for me how fun though it just proves you don't have to have to use traditional colors no it's all about exploration and you know you, you know might... and i noticed that when people win win events they tend to do things differently you know they win awards because they're not using a typical <clears throat> excuse me blue sky you know they're trying different different approaches. Exactly. You know, it's the thinking outside the box a little bit, you know? So I'm going to warm this green up a little bit as we get a little bit closer down here. And, you know, you do get greens in the sky, especially, um, you know, right around the horizon. And since we're going to put some oranges in here, this is a nice complement to that. And since we've got the complement in there, we might be able to believably get a little bit stronger orange in there. So, so. we've got about 10 minutes. And if Mary gets all four done, then we're going to vote. And you guys get to, get to pick which one you like the best. All right. If not, we'll vote on three. Okay. So now we're going to go ahead and put in our really warm tones in here. So that is mostly cad lemon and this emerald, um, rose violet. Looks good. Doesn't it? And look at, I mean, it just looks, I love how that intersects with the green. You yeah, know, that the rose violet and the green really blend beautifully together. Don't they? Yeah. I really, really like that combination. Okay. So let's get some over here. 
And I'm going to get a little bit more red. Right around the sun here. Ooh, we are really getting a lot of saturated color in here. I hope you can see how saturated it is. And that's the fun thing about sunsets is you can really get a lot of beautiful saturated color if that's what your goal is. Okay, so I'm gonna lighten this. Put a little bit more yellow in that mm. instead of the blue. It's very inviting. Yeah. And it's who oil paint. Uh, the question was, is it acrylic? This is oil. Painting right on top of photographs. Yes. So I'm having so much fun here. I'm going to oh. layer a little bit. Isn't that nice? And so see this orangey tone is the same value as the green. So it's just melding right in there. So I'm going to take a little bit more of that green again and come back into that. So very interesting. I'm loving it. Okay, so now I could gray this. Oh, now see, I didn't clean my brush. Oh, luckily it wiped off. Okay, so I was going to put a little bit, make the sky a little bit less saturated there. Okay, you're Do running you have, out of time. Okay, well, you know what? We'll just stop with this then. Okay, now we got to get to the other one real quickly. Okay. You have to paint faster than ever. Okay, so we will just, this last one, we're using cad yellow light, transparent red oxide, which that's a color that we can really get in a lot of trouble with. Yep. And because it, it's as a red, it's a very saturated uh, kind of neutral red. So that's a little too dark. So we're gonna come in and, okay, this is speed painting. I'm the uh, Bob Ross of speed painting here. <laughs> okay, so we'll put, oh, that's way too light. So we gotta add a little bit more, neutralize that. And that's probably still a little too much. A little light. Light, but. That works. There we go. So we're just getting color notes in here. So this will be the fastest of all of them. Okay, so now for the sky, I'm using the transparent oxide and the blue with just the tiniest little bit of yellow in it. And this is going to, I uh, want it more blue. That's way too neutral. I mean, way too brown. Although you do, it is nice to have the ground colors in the sky because then you get color harmony. Okay, so that's the tone I'm gonna go with. See, it's a very grayed blue, almost kind of a greenish tint to it. Okay, so we're getting this one in here. Okay, so now I'm gonna go in to my transparent red oxide and my yellow and just a tiny bit of blue and try to get some sunset colors here. So yeah, this is really gonna have more of the 
golden hour feel. And what I mean by that is a lot of times, not all the time, but the hour right before sunset, you get the most golden tones. Mm -hmm. If you just tuned in, uh, Mary Garish is trying different color combinations in each of four different paintings. Okay, so now, before we run out of time, I'm going to try to make those sunset, those orangey, very vivid sunset colors. So we're going to come down here. So we do have a nice orange that's made from that transparent red oxide and our cadmium yellow light. Mary, Dennis Marshall is asking, did you use uh, any paint medium or thinner? Uh, I'm using Neo McGill. Okay. Okay, so I'm trying to get that red. So that gets really saturated down here. And it's definitely a muted red. It's a much more tonal red. And that's all that I can get with these color combinations. So I could either just go with this, or if I wanted to at any point, you know, I could add in another color. I like it. It's very tonal. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's different. So then I'm going to put in this pinkish tone here. You guys get ready. You're going to be voting on paintings. And remember when you vote, this is just all about the color, not the shapes. You've got some really clunky shapes here. So, you know, take that into consideration. Yeah, we, we understand that you're a better painter than that. Hello, Australia. Awesome. Mary's going to Australia soon. Yes, my I am part Australian. My mother was from Australia. So I have a special place in my heart for Australia. Somebody asked that you put a swatch of transparent red oxide on your white paper below because they don't oh. know the color. Here we go. And everybody probably knows what cadmium yellow light is like. And, of course, cobalt blue. All right. So, um, and if you ever want to know what a color does, just put it on your palette and keep adding white to it. So this is a little bit of white. That's more white and more white. Okay, let's do a vote, shall we? Are you done or are you gonna put some more in on that painting? Uh, well, it depends on time. I can, you know, I can kind of carry it the whole time. You've only got about two or three minutes. Okay, I will put a little bit over here. All right. Just to kind of. Well, I like it. It's very pleasing. It's not what I would have ever predicted it to look like, though. Well, you know, and that's what I love about these limited palettes. You know, I surprise myself. Like, you know, when I got out that emerald green, I thought, oh, surely this is going to be, you know, a disaster. But, you know, I really like the way that sky came out. Now, will I tone it down if I use that palette for my um, studio painting? Well, probably but it will still have a lot of that uh, emerald green in it. It'll be a very different for me. All right, camera person, why don't you pull back? All right, right, let's. we're going to do them corner to corner. So the first one, point to A. That's A. Okay, next one will be B. Next one will be C. And next one will be D. Now pull it back so we can see all four, and you guys tell us which one you want, A, B, C, or D. We're going to give Mary some feedback, see which one is the most compelling. I'm not going to tell you my favorite. Wow. Well, it's it's hard. It's, uh, it's, it's all over the map. It's interesting, personal preferences. There's A's, there's B's, there's C's, there's D's. I don't know. I think everybody's still coming in. I think uh, it looks like, well, I'm not going to predict yet. Keep keep putting the comments in, guys. Mary, do you have a favorite? Well, you know, it's funny. Um, I'm kind of all over the place, too. Uh, I think 
I'm actually having a very hard time picking. Usually I'm much more of a tonalist, but I, I think I would mute these down a little bit, but I don't know. I'm thinking I'm really partial to the cadmium, lemon, emerald green, rose violet, and cobalt. Uh, well, you know, if people follow you on Instagram, then you can post your next studio painting, and maybe that'll be a chance to uh, see what you end up picking. There you go. That sounds great, because yeah. I really do love this scene, and uh, we'll redesign it some, most likely. And uh, so I'll post that on Instagram and get the feedback. Yeah. Okay. Well, my favorite is, well, I don't know. I like them all, actually. I think they're all fun. But I think my favorite is B. Although I would like to see that sun radiate a little bit more in B. Oh, yeah. and I, I mean, and I'm sorry. C is my favorite. B is, I like the radiation of the sun in B, but C is my favorite. Okay, yeah. So, C, you're, you're right there with me. Yeah. Only because it's different. Yes. It's, you know, that's what, that's what discovery is all about. And that's what I'm trying to do here is just discovery. Outstanding. So when Oscar Wilde had a comment that I loved, he said, uh, I'll probably misquote him, but he said something like, if an artist um, saw at, at reality, then they would cease to be an artist. So, you know, what we try to do is to interpret. You know, I did not copy that photograph in that scene. You know, I'm playing with it, I'm using it, and experimenting with it. So. All right. To well, Mary, this has been absolutely fabulous. Thank you for doing this today. We really love this. This is a terrific experiment and a great way to to look at uh, how to how to try to play play around and do some different things. So this is very very valuable. We've put your Instagram, your website, uh, your new videos. All of that is in the comment section, so people can find them. We also put in there that book that we were talking about, the John Potosh. Yes. Yeah. So. Yeah. Well, Mary, uh, what's next for you? Well, I'm looking forward in May to going to the Plain Air Convention in Cherokee, North Carolina. That should be amazing and a great time of year to enjoy the, you know, the Appalachian Trail, the, uh, the Biltmore and Asheville, everything that North, North Carolina has to offer. So our, our our team was there this last week, and uh, they said everybody's just going to be blown away with, by the painting the Biltmore. It's just going to be such a spe spectacular thing. That's on the fourth fourth day on the Friday. So a lot of people are staying over, and then the best parties happen that night. Um, yeah. So, and and you're going to be on Plein Air Live next week, which is really cool. Yes, thank you. And you're painting what on Plein Air Live? What are you going to do? Well, actually, it is very much related to this. Okay. So I um, will be painting from a seventh floor balcony in Cocoa Beach. Uh, the balcony faces east towards the ocean and also west towards the setting sun. So I'll be doing um, a number of quick plain air studies using limited palettes. Awesome. Okay. Yes. Uh, right. Talk backlit clouds and frontlit clouds. So. Okay. Well, thanks again, Mary. It's been a pleasure. See you thanks. soon. Okay. Bye-bye. Our guest today, Mary Garish. And make sure you guys try that. Get into the comments and tell me if you're going to experiment. I, I'm going to try that because I've been struggling with a couple of paintings and, and I just realized that if I do this, I will come up with the answers I'm looking for. So that is a really cool thing. The other thing you could do is print out a picture of the painting you have and then paint over that picture so you can try different color combinations without ruining the painting first. All right. Thanks again. We're here every day, 12 noon, teaching art lessons. So the world can learn art. We want everybody to believe they can do this and you can do it. I'm Eric Rhodes. Take care. Bye-bye.